Uh, so yeah. Maybe that means it's a good idea. The Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns is a Kickstarter that now has 16 taverns, an animated masterpiece that greets you when you stop by, we got Critical Role to talk about it and cause Sam to poison himself with our company name, and in the last 10 days, unlocked more stretch goals than we had planned 10 days ago. First, custom menu spreads with fantasy meals and drinks, which we'll be making into actual cocktails, including the abomination that you should never ever drink, a whole tavern themed after a handful of eastern cultures, free stickers, a poster, and a poem that will guide you through all my ciphers and codes to find out who the seeker really is. We also have a bunch of side quests, a tavern that you might stumble into when you walk toward the light at the end of the tunnel, more modular tiles, and more stuff not far away at all. So go check it out, and enjoy the video. Are you ready to have your brain break while trying to understand aliens? Cool, then let's get into this. I think that in order to explain what star spawn are, we have to look at the people that worship and create them. The book calls them a cult, but considering the black hole level of gravity behind these entities that they worship, they're more of a church. So this group of a couple dozen mortal nobodies get bored of the material world that they're a part of. I'd imagine that their thought process is similar to the following. Science, DNA, and patterns can speak on behalf of the physical world. Gods, demons, devils, and angels can speak on behalf of their own worlds and their own truths. Magic, art, and language can speak on behalf of the inner self. All of these things can be presented with questions, and all of them can eventually provide answers. But what about things that inherently don't have answers, by design? What does air look like? What's behind a black hole? And what lies beyond the stars, or what makes up a particle? Why do we even exist? If you keep asking these questions, eventually the questions themselves start to ask about you. So this culty church of people are dumb enough to actually answer the questions that the Void asks. It's a very one-sided deal. They're honestly really bad at economics. Wh which is fair though, they're philosophers of nothing. And even though there's no rhyme or reason, sometimes the stars align and open up a short gateway to the place that inherently isn't a place. I think the best way to word it is that the only thing about the Far Realm is that there isn't anything about it. But when the gateway opens between us and them, sometimes they talk to people who are ready to hear them. And then they turn into disgusting alien monster men that want to kill you, because that's what D&D is really all about. The challenge here and now between what we know and what we don't, and the star spawn are the essence of what we don't know. So let's look at them, and then look back at the nothing that doesn't live in the void. At the top of these cults, the most important character lies the star spawn seer. This guy carefully watches the stars, gathers the right group for the right ritual, and only when the stars align, on the same day that he finds a face-up penny and his takeout meal was exactly $20, and also a comet passes by, they get to talk to whatever the opposite of everything is. And then once they talk to Absolution, they turn into one of the dumbest looking motherfuckers in the game. Their brain dies, a funny little worm replaces it, their tubby bodies get covered in Fibonacci sequences, which is actually a cool idea, and their arms turn into noodles with fucking spatula hands. This is- this mini is how they're described, that's what they look like. So their goal is to keep doing this ritual over and over again until the butthole between worlds is spewing chaotic nonsense into the material world like it ate a 10 layer burrito laced with laxatives and softeners. So naturally, that's the story conflict and a great campaign basis. Seers are able to phase through things, create orbs out of their own thoughts, and warp space to hit you with a meteor staff. That'd be badass if they didn't look like a, a wet uncle but their cultists take on a number of shapes, and they have personal bodyguards. And these guys all kind of look like that really big titan from Fight Against Colossus. They're fleshy, oddly transparent, angry, and completely brain dead. Also, their big scary eyes never close. The only purpose that these things really serve is to protect their priests. Oh hey, it's like that golem from that one video I made. Fun abilities that these sweeties have, they can warp time to throw anime punches in an AoE, and their brain is actually your brain. So when they take head hurt damage, you actually take it, and they're fine. It seems to me that the star spawn theme of their variants is humanoids with varying levels of devotion and power, whose bodies get twisted by star nightmares. 
and the least interesting of these, being the weakest monster, is Gru from Despicable B Movie. They're kinda just little spiky guys that have shell shock smiles and laugh all the time. Star Spawn Gru hoard together like minions from the rise of Gru, except they scream a lot and being near them is like being on acid. Then we have Manglers, the filler monster that checks the agility assassin mark in the alien superhero team. They're really not that interesting. And my favorite, a rare type of star spawn that only comes from specific elder evils, the worm guy. These ones either prayed to a big rotting dog, or the giant worm man on the cover of the book of elder evils. And then when a comet flew by, they turned into a pile of larvae and died. Except the larva is now a guy, and that guy is like a worm vampire from space with legendary actions. I actually learned about 10 minutes into writing this that the star spawn are a complete overhaul of things called foul spawn, who are just yugoloths, and demons, and devils and space goblins. But now they're cool and unique, and I'm happy. I could see a whole adventure supplement written about the star spawn, similar to Descent into Avernus, where instead of a personal vendetta attacking a single town, the adventurers have to go up against literally the world glitching. Hell, a comet shower could serve as a Spider-Verse style Hadron Collider that ruptures the multiverse reality. Then they'd have to go up against some titan elder evil that doesn't actually want to destroy the world or even know that it exists, but, but cultists are bringing it into a place that it erases by existing. Or you could have a group of these warped worshippers, abyssal cultists, and a team of vigilant paladins butt heads over a comet that's about to pass, and it's significant to all of them. To end the video, let's ask ourselves, what is an elder evil? Well, to answer that, I'll have to pull out the most epic trick in the YouTube book. <laughs> I'm gonna stretch this out to two videos and end it here so that you have to wait. Man, this video felt like I was having a stroke. Uh, bye.